Hey guys, welcome to this video, um, which I'm calling, what am I calling it? Coloring an Elf. Uh, I got a few requests to show a coloring process, so I'm going to start with the digital process using Photoshop. So I hope you enjoy, or else. Alright, let's get started. Um, I did this drawing in Photoshop. That's not always how I'll do it. Uh, sometimes I'll do the drawing by hand in ink and then scan it in and clean it up. Uh, but this time I did it digitally, which is also how I do my, my webcomic. Um, there's a link to that in the comments. You should check that out too. So I start by putting two layers down underneath my line work. Um, you can see I put down a green. And then the layer on top of that I put down purple. So the green is acting as my background color. And then the purple is going to be my way of uh, selecting the character and making that a silhouette. It helps that they're, you know, contrastingly different colors. So I select that purpley pink layer, um, and then I just start erasing the color, going around the character, uh, and around any areas that I don't want to be included in the character's area. Okay, so now, now I've got that all erased, I'll use the magic wand and I select uh, the character. Uh, do shift command I to invert my selection so that um, anything that isn't the character is selected and then I can just click delete and delete all that color okay I then lock that layer I do the pixel lock layer which allows me to then color on top of that purple layer but only where there was already color so I don't have to worry about staying in the lines or on the outside edges so now it's just as simple as I'm, I'm choosing the colors I want to use and changing changing the colors that need to be changed. You can see I, I was playing around with the color of the purple there a little bit. Um, going in, you know, adding the brown leathers, blue hair, because blue hair is fun. Um, if you have questions about why I'm choosing some of these colors or whatever, uh, that's probably for another video. I think just talking about color choice is a whole another video. Um, but I am trying to keep it kind of limited, my palette limited to it, you know, around the same family of colors. Um, and I wanted the face to pop, so I've got that strong blue color around it. It's really saturated, surrounding, kind of framing her face so that you look at her. Okay, now here, here's some magic. This is where I put in the blush, literally. So I do a new layer on top of that, I get a gradient tool, and I'm adding some blush. I'm not worried about staying, you know, in any lines, because what I'll do now is I'll, um, I'll grab the magic wand tool again, and here we go, oh, I promise I'll do it. Oh, I did already. Whoa, wait a second, I'm behind. <laughs> so anyway, I used the magic wand, selected the skin color, and then deleted everything around it, right? Same same idea as when I was doing the purple. Okay. All right. So here I am adding a bit of uh, change in color on the cloak. So to start with, it's all over that bottom, but then I'm just going to select the cloak color, put it on a multiply layer on top of that uh, with a kind of brown gradient, and I'm play around with a little bit a little bit with that just to make it kind of fade to a different color because a whole lot of the same color is boring. Now I like this this was kind of fun. So I wanted to add um some dirt and mud to her cloth. So I'm gonna find a nice splattery looking brush and get a kind of a lighter brown. This is gonna be like the dried mud, right? So this is the crusty dirt. Um, which is always going to be higher. And then lower down on the cloak, it's not as dried, right? It's still kind of wet, so I put a little mud color um, on top of that. Then I kind of play around with the layer a bit. Um, you know, I didn't want it to be too strong, so that's all you looked at. So I toned that down a bit. And then, uh, okay, here we go. Now I'm going to select a nice shadow color. Um, I like using a, uh, a brush that has tapered ends on it, and I'm going to make it a multiply layer and go down to whatever that is, 30-something percent. 
And I'm just going to start adding my shadow on a new layer. Um, but if you'll notice, it's not really showing up so great. So in just a little bit, I'm going to, I'm going to change that color to a darker, darker purple. There we go. Purple's a fun shadow. Sometimes it's good to use a blue or an indigo. Sometimes it's um, I'll do like a warm red. That's fun too. Anyway, so here I'm adding the shadow. I'm going to speed this up in just a little bit. Um, I'm not going to claim that I'm the best artist in the world or that I'm even doing this perfectly right. There's probably some shadows I'm not getting right here. Uh, but if you <laughs> if you want to know where to put the shadows, uh, the best thing to do is just get familiar with real objects in real life and what their shadows look like, how they wrap around. So instead of just treating this like a flat image, I'm trying to think about the space that each object occupies, right? And if the light is going to come down, where the shadow would start to wrap around. And I like just doing a kind of cell shading look. Um, I don't go for a gradient shadow usually. Sometimes I'll do that. But most of the time I'm just doing a strong, clean edge shadow like this, like you'd see in an animated film or something. Um, here I'm going to start uh, speeding up. But I, I love the tapered end of the brush when I'm doing the shadow, f specifically for these hair areas. So I can get a nice, I can maintain a hair or fur quality with the tapered edge on there, which I like. Okay. <clears throat> um, once I've finished this multiply layer, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll actually multiply, I'll duplicate that multiply layer. I'll do that in just a little bit. I'll create another one. And I'm going to change... Um, change it from a multiply layer to a color burn. So here we go, I'm going to duplicate it, put it on top, and I'll hide that one I just made, and I'll change that to a color burn, which just, it changes the way that the purple reacts to the color underneath it, and then I'll bring back that second multiply layer. So it's a multiply layer on top of a color burn layer. I just like the colors that it creates. It can make some really interesting colors on skin, um, things like that. Okay, uh, now it's time for the highlights. So basically the same principle, except I'm doing an overlay layer. That's what it's called. And I'm, I'm choosing a warmer yellow, almost yellow-orange, uh, to use for my highlights. And th these aren't like set in stone. You don't have to use these colors because lighting is different where, you know, depending on where you are. So I'm doing this because I want a warm light with a cool shadow, but if I wanted to be somewhere where there was cold lighting, I wanted the character to look like they were in, you know, blue lights or whatever, obviously I wouldn't. Then I would, I would use a different color um, for the highlight. Here I'm just going in. Some of these I'll only just do a little rim edge lighting. Other areas like the that animal's tail, I, I did a... A uh, larger section of highlight. Okay, let's keep on going here. All right. So while I'm while I'm doing the rest of this highlighting, um, I gotta say I love I love drawing cute stuff. Let's just be honest. This is pretty stinking adorable. Like, <laughs> she's happy. She's got big eyes and that animal is pink with <laughs> it's cute it's cute but you know what um that's okay because it's it's cool to draw cute stuff right anyway i i really like comics um but i also really like children's books so um i love doing work for both mediums so try and keep kind of cute, you know? Cute's the new... Uh, ugly? <laughs> okay. So here I'm going to add... Uh, I, you see, I selected kind of a... Is that a magenta? Sure. It's like a red-purple, right? I'm putting that on the bottom half of the character with a gradient, another multiply layer, and then I'm going to turn it down. 
I just want the I want there to be an overall change in color, right? Um, I want it to get darker as it goes down lower because there's going to be more shading down there. And then in the same principle, I'm going to go to the top to another overlay layer with a warm yellow. And I'm going to put that on top of the character and I'll, I'll create a mask here from the character and the line work so that the yellow only appears on her, right? Now I have a little bit of extra lighting on the top just to add that extra depth. I like it as well. I put it over the um, line work because it, um, it helps to fade the line work a little bit up there in the brighter areas so it's not as, as stark of a contrast. Okay. I'm just playing around with how strong I want it to be right there. Okay, I don't usually do this, but sometimes I like to try something new. Um, so here, oh, I'm adding a little light on that orb on her staff. And then I'm going to create another layer. I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the highlight layer, but I'm going to do it with this uh, blue. And I'm going to do kind of, I'm going to use it for two things. As kind of um, a light from that orb, but also an underlighting that's being reflected from from the ground. It just adds that extra dimension, you know? I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Okay. So I'm rocking that. Um, I, I'm realizing I, I sped this up pretty fast. So if there's some areas that aren't quite clear and you want better um, uh, let's see, more detailed instruction on, on part of the process, just let me know in the comments below. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll do more segmented videos, right? I can do a video just on using that wand tool or multiply layers or whatever. Just let me know um, what you'd like to see more of. Okay, now here, this is the piece de resistance. Um, I'm placing on top um, a texture. I love to go around, walk around the neighborhood, take pictures of stuff, or scan papers that I have, or stained bits of something. So here's just a, a piece of white textured kind of watercolor paper that I scanned, putting it over my drawing, over my color, and I put it to a multiply, and I'm going to drop it down here. I'll zoom in, you can see there's a bit of texture there. I'll move it up um, on top of the color work. It just adds a, a more organic feel to it. I don't want it to feel too digital. I want it to feel like a natural piece of art that was done by hand. So I'm going to grab another texture. This is a piece of cardboard that I scanned in. Um, I'm going to put that on top as well. And this, I'm going to do an, put it as an overlay layer, which does some interesting stuff. I kind of like the look of it. And it, again, it just gives it a slightly more organic feel. I love my stuff to look slightly too extremely gritty. Anywhere in that range. Pristine's not for me. But it, really, this is pretty clean, though. It's not very gritty. Usually I go grittier. Anyway. Uh, right now I'm just playing around with the background color. I want it to be something I think looks nice compared to the character. Okay, most the coloring's all done. So what I'm going to do now is... Uh, just play around with the overall color using a color balance layer. And I, I'm trying to make it just slightly more purple overall so that all the colors kind of unite just just a little bit more. Right? Um, what I found, a lot of my coloring process is just playing around. So here I'm going to try something. And it's not going to work. Spoiler. I tried a grading on top of it, which I'm then turning into a color, and but it just killed it too much, I thought. It kind of deadened the life that was in the piece. So I, you know, eventually I just get rid of it. For a little bit I tried making it really subtle, but I was like, what's the point? It's not <laughs> it's not adding anything. So then I just get rid of it. Put the kibosh on that one. Um, here I'm gonna add one more gradient. I felt like the bottom half of the character was standing out too much against the background. Um, I wanted you to look at the face, so I need to get rid of that contrast. So I just put a, um, a bit of brownish red color down there at the bottom behind the character to make that 
not as, you know, like I said, contrasted uh, as it was. I'll clean up a little bit. I saw I got a bit of that under lighting um, not on the staff, so I'll clean that up. Okay. Here we go. Um, now, now is the final. Here we go. S say it with me. S oh, no. So here we go. S oh, C, J, K, 2015. That was me signing the piece digitally. And, uh, there you go. There's the final piece, colored. Let us call her Abigail. <laughs>